Welcome to the Settle Your Side Hustle podcast. I started this podcast for one very simple reason, and that is to show you what it's like to actually start a business, going from a side hustle business that I'm doing while working the nine to five to being full time in my business, living the life that I want, controlling my time, controlling my hours. And the number one problem that I had with every podcast I listen to on the market is that either A, they don't actually get down to the nitty gritty. They're not transparent with you telling you about their actual struggles or B, they've already made it so there aren't struggles to share. And that's why I decided to start this podcast podcast right here right now as I've just transitioned into full-time entrepreneurship so I can actually share with you the struggles as I go through them and you can learn from my experiences while you're growing your business alongside me. Now let's get into the show. What is up side hustlers, entrepreneurs, business builders, and dream makers. Welcome to the Set Your Side Hustle podcast episode number 10. We made it guys. We're in the double digits. Woo! Today, I have something really entertaining that I want to share with you. This uh, this kind of made me laugh, made me chuckle, um, and it's kind of exciting to see for a lot of reasons. So uh, yesterday um, on YouTube, I got my very first hater on this channel. It was exciting. The guy, like, I, I really appreciate this individual. They were a total troll, uh, but they they went in and they re- they commented on every single short on the channel. Uh, so and, and they actually watched all the shorts and they actually uh, like re- responded to content inside the shorts. And so um, this is really exciting for a lot of reasons. And I want you guys to I want you guys to hear the lessons from this, um, both in why getting negative uh, comments like that is good and in where I actually didn't re- didn't do what I should have in response to these comments. And I have since learned a lesson. So I went ahead and I posted about this guy on Facebook. And so on Facebook, I just made a post. It was like, hey, got my first hater on YouTube. You know, the channel has 11 subscribers right now and like 4,000 views. But the guy felt it important to take the time to go through each and every one of my videos to make a rude comment based on the fact that they have no idea who I am or what I do. And so all of their comments were responding to um, the videos, but they were actually... um, They were intentionally interpreting the videos in the most negative way they possibly could. And I'm not saying this as I'm like defensive or concerned. Like, actually, I was genuinely excited. And I shared with a lot of my friends and with my wife. Uh, My wife has a channel with 80,000 subscribers on it. And I shared with her. I was like, hey, I'm finally catching up to you. I finally got some hate. Um, But on this post on Facebook, and this is a great example of where negative comments are actually beneficial to you. When I made this post on Facebook, this post kind of blew up for me. And that's always relative. So I'll just tell you, like, I have over 50 reactions and I have 24 comments on it. And most of them are like people saying things like, you know, that means you're doing something right. And it means, um, you, you know, this is, this is a sign that you're in the right direction. It's a great milestone. Um, Got one who said, go back and forth with them. It helps engagement. And, you know, so people are all, all like all of the comments are supportive and saying it means you're doing something right. And they're all right. So uh, a couple of things are true about getting these kind of comments. Uh, one is really simply that they are amazing for engagement on social media platforms and on YouTube. Uh, when you get negative comments like that, you're going to have people who are going to respond to those comments. They're going to go up to bat for you. Uh, You can engage with them if you do it tactfully and intelligently. And all it does is help the algorithm so more people see your content. Um, So like I have like 13 subscribers on the channel and several of them are past clients of mine. This this guy goes and makes comments on like five of the clips where he's saying things like you've clearly never had a client. And well, what I could do is I could just sit back and I could just let my uh, my clients who are subscribers respond and engage. And I have a couple who I'm very confident would have responded and engaged based on the fact that they've done this on the past on other platforms, on Facebook, for example. Now, the the tough thing is making sure that you, if you do engage, that you engage properly. You want to engage in a way where you remain calm, collected. You don't get argumentative. Um, you you can actually like show yourself as an expert and show yourself as a respectful human if you just kind of own things. So like, for example, um, not a hater, but another comment that I got on another another short was just saying something like, you know, I love how this has no context and explains nothing. And I went and I watched the short. And honestly, guys, I done did messed up. It was a bad short. I shouldn't have made it because the short was talking about shiny object syndrome. But it stopped right after I defined shiny object syndrome. 
like, okay, it started right after I defined shiny object syndrome, right? So it starts after I've defined it. And then it stops right before I give a, uh, a solution to shiny object syndrome. So the short doesn't say anything of value. And so this comment, I looked at it and I watched the clip and I was like, he's right. I don't know why I made this short. I don't know what I was thinking when I put this short together. This is a bad one. And so the right thing for me to do is probably just to comment and reply to that comment. Be like, you're totally right. I don't know what I was thinking. This is a bad short. Um, but as long as you can own your stuff, you can be honest, you can be transparent, you can come out as an expert, you can point things out without seeming like you're being defensive or argumentative. You can really go a long way towards proving yourself an expert, proving yourself respectful, respectable, and somebody that other people want to work with. And these things are all great for engagement. So here is the mistake that I made when this guy went and he made all these comments on all of my videos. I didn't know this about YouTube. So, you know, I have 13 subscribers. Clearly, I'm not an expert on YouTube, uh, but I didn't know this about YouTube yet. You know, I've been on it for a couple weeks uh, with this channel, but YouTube gives you the option to block somebody, um, block somebody who's making comments, and it, it'll let you report them if you think that they're har being like harassing you or others. I didn't report him. I don't think he's harassing me. I think he's just a troll. Um, but what I, I did block him because in my mind, I was thinking, you know what? I don't need to see more from this guy. And I th I assumed based on the little description it gave me that all it was going to do is make sure that I didn't see more from this guy. But what it actually did is it deleted all of his comments on all of my posts. And so what I've learned from that is that I'm never, probably never, unless there's extreme cases, going to block somebody on YouTube again because I lost the opportunity for the engagement from all of his comments. And so lesson learned um, that could have absolutely blown up my channel if I would have let it. Uh, but now I know that you can't block somebody on YouTube as the creator without it removing all of their comments. And so that was the mistake that I made lesson learned. Um, really what I wanted to share with you guys. And the reason that I making this episode was just the idea that like, um, if you ever heard it, it's true that there's no such thing as bad publicity. Like, um, all engagement helps the algorithm. Um, the more people argue in comments, the better it actually is for the creator. And the, the tough thing about that is having thick enough skin to be okay with it. And to recognize that, uh, sometimes the persons that like, these people are going to be saying, mean, hurtful, hateful things that are just completely irrelevant and irrational and nowhere near true. And sometimes they're going to be saying things that um, hit right at the core of your personal insecurities and maybe even are true. And you're going to get that whole spectrum. And regardless, you got to have thick enough skin to realize that this person doesn't know you and their opinion doesn't matter and that all that they're actually doing is helping you. As long as you recognize that and remember that, like and detach yourself from the comments, but still engage with them because it's still helpful for your channel. When you actually engage, you show that you're active. Um, it does work out in your favor when things like this happen. You just have to have thick enough skin. And the only way that I know to really build it, if you don't have it, is just to experience it. So it's just diving in and just pushing forward and becoming more tolerant. And one of the reasons that, um, that these things don't phase me nearly as much as they used to is because of how much I've done um, in my businesses in the past. I have I have collectively with all of my different businesses, I have just shy. I'm, I'm almost, almost at the point where I've had a thousand total customers. And so I've ran a lot of ads and I've gotten a lot of negative comments on ads. I've had, I've ran DM ads on Facebook where people literally only respond to the DM ad to cuss me out. And all those things just, you know, they build, you build thicker skin and it's, it makes it easier to respond to these things in the future. So that's what I have for you guys. Um, before we sign off, I'm just going to remind you, as I always do, that I have an incredible free gift for you if you're trying to build your own business. Uh, if you are at the point where you want to start a business, but you don't know what you want to do, then I have a list of 50 side hustles. You can start proven side hustles that take just a laptop, right? If you know what you want to do, but you don't know how to do it, I also have the checklist of the 11 tools that you're going to need to build a side hustle online. And finally, if you know what you want to do, you know how to do it, but you don't know where your next customer is coming from, then I have this free Facebook group where I do free trainings every single Monday on exactly how to build your side hustle. So if you're in any of those three camps, all you got to do is click on the link in the description and you'll get access to all of that all at once. That's what I have for you guys. It's Friday, so we're going into the weekend. I will be back in your earbuds once again on Monday. Love you guys.